Hello, I'm Q Wakan, also known as Corvus Cornix. Welcome to Classy Movie Rambles, where I talk about old movies that I found in my classy while cleaning. This week's movie is Lethal Weapon, and it was made in 1987, and it's about 1 hour and 40 minutes long. And the movie starts with a helicopter flying over a landscape and panning into a, a building where a woman is laying. Uh, and she's half naked, and she wakes up and takes a bunch of drugs, and she jumps off a balcony. And then the next day, cutting to Roger, one of the main characters of, of two, he wakes up and it is his 50th birthday. And then cutting to Martin Riggs, which is the second character, he wakes up at his uh, caravan at the beach and he's coughing and he goes up to grab a beer and takes a few sips and take a piss. And then cutting back to Roger again and his wife uh, asks him about uh, a, a guy named Michael Hunsaker. And uh, he's been trying to reach Roger and that's about that but that becomes later later in the part of the movie I guess and then Roger goes to work and uh, he, he finds out that the girl that was jumping from the building earlier was named Amanda and Amanda Hunsucker so it's the daughter of the guy that has been trying to get a hold of him so Roger tries to get in contact with Michael and then cutting to Riggs he's also a cop by the way he tries to make a deal with some uh, under, he's undercover basically trying to make a deal with some I think it's cocaine but everything goes south and he gets taken a, as a hostage uh, but he managed to break out of it and this is the first part when you see him acting like really crazy because he really doesn't really care about uh, life at the moment and then cutting to him later in this caravan and he's actually getting drunk and he's crying and he, the reason he's doing this and he, why he's being so self-destructive is because he lost his wife. Uh, I don't really know where or how, but he lost his wife and he's devastated by it. So he, he drinks a lot and he watches TV and he takes out his gun and he tries to shoot himself. So he put it, the barrel into his mouth and by some miracle he's watching some Christmas show and he doesn't pull the trigger. So a really dark scene, but it kind of, you know... It's part of the character development, I guess. And then cutting back at the police office, and they're trying to get into uh, the Christmas spirit. I think this movie takes place during Christmas, because they talk about Christmas, but there's not a whole lot of snow and stuff, so, but, yeah. Uh, and then there's the, this counselor talking to the police chief about Riggs' behavior, and Riggs, uh, or the police chief says that Riggs is a tough bastard, he can take it, but he doesn't really know what's been brewing deep down. And then Roger gets informed that he is getting a new partner, and uh, that this is one of the more funny scenes. He's at the office, and Riggs arrives, and he checks his gun, and Roger goes for the gun because thing he thinks that Riggs is a, excuse me, a criminal, and but isn't it's his new partner? And then they go down to the parking lot, and they have a discussion, and Riggs kind of brings out the cards on the table and says, "Not no one wants to work with me because they think I'm crazy." And uh, Rogers is not having it either. He's, he doesn't like the whole kind of idea of working with uh, with Riggs. And they talk about his uh, Riggs' past Vietnam experience that he uh, was uh, registered as a lethal weapon. I think they were tying into the title and all. And then later, cutting to the a warehouse that is connected to a club where the main bad guys make some extortion deal with heroin. I think. And then Roger goes to talk to Michael Hunsaker about Amanda's death and everything, if he knew anything about it. And Michael tells him that she was into way bad stuff and drugs and she made like a porno tape. And he asked Roger if he could um, like kill the bastards who actually did this to his daughter. Because they, apparently they were in the Vietnam War together and um, yeah, so basically Roger uh, owes him for something. And then Roger and Riggs goes to talk down a guy from a roof, uh, for a guy from jumping down from a roof. And it's kind of a funny scene where Riggs actually walks up to the guy and tries to talk him down, but he doesn't manage to. So he says, yeah, you want to smoke, you know. And my boss is washing down there, so he's like, um, don't make me look bad or something. And he offers him a smoke and he handcuffs him and they jump off the roof together and they land into like a balloon, like a, well, more or less like a landing pad or whatever. And Roger is not happy about this. In fact, he's pissed. So he grabs Riggs and um, take him aside to like a building, and they talk about if if Riggs really is crazy, and he confirms this. He every and he tells Roger basically the whole story. Like he tried to 
come up with a reason to live every single day and then he wants to shoot himself with a gun and he t- and Rogers offers him his gun and he puts it in like to his head and everything and then he's about to pull the trigger but uh, Roger kind of stops the kind of like the trigger mechanism with his thumb and then actually realize that he is crazy and then Riggs leaves and he just said that yeah I gotta get something to eat <clears throat> And then Roger calls up the counselor and to ask him about Riggs and what to do. And even later, Riggs and Roger drive down a highway and they start to talk again. And Riggs says, like, happy birthday for yesterday. And there's like this funny scene with the laugh about it because it has been terrible so far and it's not been a good day. So they go on a possible lead to a Beverly Hills house, like a penthouse. And when they arrive there, there's a gunfight and with the guy that was they, they suspected or were supposed to question he died drowns in a pool and uh, Riggs managed to save uh, Murtha's life basically uh, keeping him or getting away from being shot <clears throat> and then there's another scene where Roger invites Riggs home to uh, his uh, apartment to eat food and Roger and uh, Riggs goes to the boat and drink a lot of beer and they talk about the case and how to try to like you know all the pieces and everything and then rig Martha's daughter roger's daughter comes out and talks to them and ask if she can go go to a party but roger says no because she's grounded because she was smoking weed and the whole deal about this is they've been drinking beer all night uh <laughs> so roger says like well i tell you what now weed is illegal now uh, but booze isn't So, there's this whole argument between, like, weed and uh, booze, I guess. And then... And then Roger goes through his mail, and he actually watched a little bit of the uh, the porno tape, the evidence tape, to get the whole kind of situation into his head, what's going on, I guess. So, the next day, Riggs wakes up Murtha with with the smell of coffee, which is a funny scene because he's up early and everything. And then even later they go to the shooting range while they discuss the case again and try to think about how the all the pieces fit together. And there's basically a competition between Riggs and Roger and how good they are at shooting. So Roger shows him that he's good at shooting, but Riggs even pulls the target away further and he shoots like a smiley on the thing and proving that he is actually really good at shooting. <laughs> Uh, and then Riggs uh, and Roger is supposed to go and talk to a hooker because she was one of the witnesses that actually witnessed the uh, Amanda die at the beginning, I guess. But when they arrive at the house, it explodes, and they um, they talk to a bunch of kids. Uh, I think this one killed the kid named Alfred, who actually saw the whole thing. Uh, and they, they try and get a description for like a four-year-old kid but it's not easy and the kid says like well he he, he was paint or something paint and Roger and they kind of figure out like a tattoo and uh, Riggs shows him his tattoo and, it, and the kid says it was exactly like that and there's, now there is like a big trouble because they found in the rubble of the house that exploded they found this mercury switch detonators which are used by um, CIA or the Vietnam forces and the tattoo that Riggs has, and also the bad guy apparently has, is a special forces tattoo, so the puzzle pieces start to fit together. And then Riggs and Roger goes to speak to uh, uh, Michael Hunsaker in person, and he spills the beans, and a shopper arrives and he shoots uh, Hunsaker dead, basically. And then Riggs goes out to find some more information on the, t- on the town, like talk to other hookers, I guess, but he gets shot. But in fact, he's he he's kind of lucky because he's wearing body armor or plot armor, I guess. So he survives the thing, but now the bad guys think that they're dead. And Riggs also recognized the shooter to be the same guy that was in the helicopter. So now they have more more of a lead on the enemy, the bad guys, because now they think he's dead and they have the upper hand. <clears throat> Some more bad news. Roger and Riggs get a call from the bad guy, or Roger gets gets it that the uh, Roger's daughter, or one of his daughters, has been kidnapped by the bad guys, and he's told to be, go uh, go outside into the desert alone to confront them and to make a deal. 
so he goes out to the desert and Riggs follow him with a sniper rifle so he Riggs is in the distance with the sniper rifle and Roger goes up to talk to the bad guys and then there is like a, a fire exchange and Roger has a grenade and all this crazy stuff and everything starts to look good but then it goes south so the daughter jumps into a car and she drives away and she gets captured by a, a guy in a helicopter and Roger gets captured and Riggs get captured as well so Riggs gets brought in and he gets tortured and Roger gets beaten up and that's yeah that's the end of that part so Riggs managed to escape and he saves Roger and his daughter and there's a firefight and one of the bad guys get away in a car and Riggs chase after him but he loses him and then the main bad guy drives out in an alley uh, but Roger shoots the driver in the face so the car flips and it explodes because there were grenades in him and all the heroin was in the back too so yay <laughs> so <clears throat> Roger and Rig, Riggs and Roger goes after the last ba bad guy because he knows where Roger lives now so they can't leave him hanging I guess so they follow the guy to the uh, to Roger's house where Riggs ends up fighting the guy in a fist fight and uh, it ends up in a brawl and Riggs more or less wins the fight but then the bad guy pulls the gun from one of the uh, unsuspected police officer at the scene and tries to shoot Riggs but Riggs and Murta shoots him, shoots him dead basically. And later Riggs goes to the, to the church, well not the church, but the cine, to the cinemary. No, what do you call it? Like a, to the graveyard. And uh, he visits his wife's grave basically, pays his respect. And even later Riggs goes to Roger's uh, house to for Christmas dinner, I guess. And he brings his dog along called Sam. And that doesn't go well with their cat called Burbank and there's like this funny scene where he pan out from the house and all hell breaks loose and Roger says like I'm too old for this shit or something like that. So what do I think about this movie? It's a good movie. Uh, you can argue that it is a Christmas movie or whatnot, but you know, anyway it's a good movie for what it is. It's an action movie. If it's on and you have nothing better to do then yeah go for it. So anyway, thanks for listening and or watching and take care.